So Spotify finally supports lossless music streaming, but well, 80s kids like me, we grew up with compact discs. We've had lossless music for over 40 years. Or have we? Last year, I reviewed Moondrop's Disc Dream CD player, and I noted that, according to Moondrop, the internal buffer used for skip protection on the Disc Dream is lossless. But what does that even mean? I got a comment on the video last week asking just that, and I thought, well, that could be an interesting topic for an episode of Waveguide. So, well, on this episode of Waveguide, we're gonna talk about why portable CD players weren't always actually lossless, and why it is nice to know that modern players like the Disc Dream are. And if you like the idea of helpful audio nerd content like this, well, shout out to sponsor Hi-Fi Go for making Waveguide videos like this one possible. We'll talk more about them later, but for now, why weren't old CD players actually lossless? So let's start with a really basic explanation of how CD players work, all right? You've got a compact disc that stores digital music, and a CD player uses an optical laser to read the music off of the disc as you listen to it. Like there's actually a little lens and a laser light that the player uses to read the surface of the CD as it spins in physical meat space. But if the CD player gets physically bumped, it can and often did disrupt the laser momentarily, and that would cause the music to skip or stop playing for a second or two while the laser realigned itself. Now, for home stereo systems, this wasn't a big problem. You didn't have to worry about your home stereo getting bumped all the time. But for portable CD players, well, this is a big problem. Probably the biggest challenge to making portable CD players viable in the first place. And it's something that even modern CD players need to account for. I remember my first CD player. It was an early Sony Discman, and I'd listen to it on my bus ride to school. And I would keep the Discman like tucked inside of a padded case to try and insulate it from bumps on the road. And if you're wondering what 12 year old me was listening to on my Discman, I think it was a lot of Ace of Bass and lightning crashes. Good times. But yeah, skipping sucked, but it didn't suck as much as having to rewind and flip cassette tapes. So I still loved my Discman. And you know what else I love? I love that Hi-Fi Go sponsors Waveguide and makes these videos possible. Hi-Fi Go sells the latest audio gear, including IEMs, headphones, and even CD players. So the next time you buy audiophile things, remember Hi-Fi Go. I've got them linked in the description if you wanna check them out, but let's get back to talking about portable CD players. So later models of the Discman introduced a feature called Electronic Skip Protection, or ESP. And kind of funny enough, that name always confused me a little bit as a kid, because like, how do you have an electronic solution to a physical skipping problem? Well, it turns out you can view that skipping problem as a physical problem, but you can also view it as a time problem. And that is how you solve it electronically. Basically, skip protection reads the music off of the disc faster than you can actually listen to it. And the music that gets read before you listen to it is then stored internally on the CD player in RAM. This internal RAM is what we would call a buffer. If the CD player gets bumped and the laser gets upset, as long as it can recover before your listening catches up to the end of the buffer, you don't hear the skip. It's like if your Wi-Fi drops, you can keep watching this YouTube video without interruptions because YouTube buffers the video a few seconds ahead of what you're currently watching. So when you're listening to a CD on a portable CD player with skip protection, you're actually listening to the buffer, not to the CD, which might just be a pedantic technicality except for one big issue. RAM was super expensive in the 90s. Now, you might be watching this video on a computer or a phone that has somewhere between four and 32 gigabytes of RAM, maybe even more. But the buffer on a lot of these early CD players was more like 500 kilobytes, which is enough to buffer about 10 seconds of music if you compress the music. I recently watched a really good YouTube video on this subject by a channel called This Does Not Compute. I'll have it linked in the description if you wanna follow his technical dive into like 30 year old data sheets to figure this stuff out. But he basically confirmed something that I've suspected for a while, that the music that gets written to these anti-skip buffers is often compressed and it's not lossless. Or put simply, if you're listening on a portable CD player with skip protection, there is a good chance that you're not actually listening to lossless music, even though a CD is kind of the very definition of lossless. Okay, now I've talked before about how I don't think that lossless music is actually as important as a lot of audiophiles make it out to be. So am I being hypocritical by thinking that it's important that a modern CD player like the Moondrop has lossless skip protection? Well, kind of, but not entirely. So in that same YouTube video that I referenced, the data sheets, they showed that the, these skip protection systems were typically compressing audio with a four bit ADPCM codec, which doesn't mean much to me, except that that codec is actually available as an export format in modern Audacity, which means 
I was actually able to test it the other day with some of my own music. Now, with just casual listening, most people won't hear the difference between raw CD music and a 4-bit ADPCM buffer. I had to specifically listen for artifacts, and even then, I only really heard obvious issues when the music was transitioning from like silence into noise. But interestingly, the difference was actually really easy to hear over my Bluetooth bone conduction headphones, which are not hi-fi by any stretch of the imagination. And this kind of supports the idea that lossless music for services like Spotify might actually matter if you're listening with Bluetooth headphones, where the original audio is gonna get compressed to send over Bluetooth, and if you're compressing an already lossy audio file, it might result in a noticeably worse sound. At least with my bone phones, that seemed to be true. But that's a topic for another episode of Waveguide. Thanks again to HiFiGo for making Waveguide possible. Check them out the next time you need to buy an IM headphone or a CD player. I've got them linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't yet, well, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, join me on Discord, also linked below, and I'll catch you in the next Super Radio. Cheers. Share your thoughts in this pursuit. Let's begin with the future.